Today, we're going to take a look at how you can use JetSmart filters to create much more interactive filters through your website, whether you use WooCommerce or you're using Jet Engine or a multitude of other ways of filtering your information. If this is interesting to you, stick around because I'm going to take you through all the basics right now. So in this primer for how to use JetSmart filters, I'm going to show you how you can do things like price ranges and how you can use those in conjunction with secondary and tertiary filters. So as you can see in front of me, I've got a simple price range slider. I've also got a category option that will show all the categories and subcategories for all the products I've got in WooCommerce. And you'll see that if I simply slide this over, this will automatically filter the information. And if I want to go one step further and I say I want just accessories within that price range, I simply check the category that I want. And you can see now I've filtered it down to a single individual product. So it's very easy, but the way it's set up can cause some confusion. So today we're just going to see the basics of how you start working with JetSmart filters. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so the first thing you need to make sure you've got is Jet Smart Filters downloaded and installed. And depending upon how and what you want to filter, you'll need to make sure you've got the relevant other plugins. So for example, if we're dealing with WooCommerce, we just need to make sure we've got WooCommerce and JetSmart filters. That's what we're going to concentrate on today. But in future videos, I will show you how you can use this in conjunction with things like Jet Engine and other things. So let's crack on and see how we start using this. So when you're working with JetSmart filters, one of the first things you need to do is actually create the parameters for your filter. Once you've done that, you can then use the filter widgets to drop that into the design that you're working with. So you see, once you've installed JetSmart filters on the left hand side in your dashboard, you'll see you've got a new entry called Smart Filters. In there, we have two simple options, Smart Filters, which will list any of the filters we've created and Add New, which allows us to do exactly where it says and add a new filter. So let's start with that. First of all, let's click on Add New. That'll take us over and what can look quite daunting to start off with, especially when you get into some of the different types of filter settings. But don't worry, bear with me because it's actually pretty simple to deal with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create that slider filter that allows us to work on a price range. So we're going to create a title. So we're going to say price range filter. Once we've done that, then we're going to give it a filter label. So we're going to say filter price range, and we can do exactly the same then for the active filter label. So these labels are primarily used to help you go through and choose the right filter when you're dealing with the widgets inside Elementor itself. So don't worry, just name them something that makes sense to you. Next thing we have is the filter type. If we click to expand that out. We've got a range of different filter types we can use, checkboxes, select ranges, and so on. For this example, we're going to say that we want to use a range. Once we do that, that'll open up a selection of options which we can go through and we can just insert what we need in there. So things like the values prefix, value suffix and so on. You don't need to put those in there. If you want to, you can do. The thousand separator, again, if you want to use that, we'll just say we're going to use a comma, but depend upon how much the monetary value of the kind of product you sell, you may not even hit the thousands. So again, don't worry too much about that. Again, decimal separator is automatically inserted, number of decimal places and so on. The minimum and the maximum values are the values you want to use within your range. But what you can do is you can simply say, get the minimum and maximum dynamically. So if you're working with something like WooCommerce, you've got prices on all your products. The best option here would be to choose WooCommerce min max prices. Then it'll automatically set those up for you. What we do want to set though is the step filter. So depending again on the price range, so if you're dealing with something with a range of one pound to a hundred pound, a value step of 10 might be perfect. But if you're dealing with something from 50,000 to a million pound, you wouldn't want to go in tens. You'd obviously want to go in larger increments. So choose what you think is relevant to the values that you're going to be working with inside your WooCommerce. So we'll choose 10, 10 for this example. Next up, we've got the query variable. Now, this is something that depending upon the type of data you're filtering against will be either something you have to put in or you can leave blank. Now, because we're dealing with WooCommerce, you can see we've got a range of different WooCommerce predefined fields or query variables that we can use. We are filtering against our prices. So all we need to do is put underscore price. So it knows it's going to use that query to vary a query variable to query our prices against using this slider. Hope that makes sense. So once we've done that, we've got everything we should need in there. We can hit publish and we've now created our price range filter. 
Now we can go in and actually add in the widget and then tell it which price range filter we want to use. So now that we've created our first filter, we need to go and apply that using one of the widgets in Elementor. So I've already set things up in here using templates, using the theme builder. So I'm going to go through to the template section. We're going to come down to the theme builder and I'm going to find the template that I want. In this example, it's the product archive and we're going to edit with Elementor. Now I've already made space within the template for my actual search placeholder. So you can see on the left hand side, I've got this column ready. Now obviously you can set this up any way that you want and depend upon the data you want. And if you're using templates and so on, will depend upon how you want to do things. But the process of actually building these filters and inserting them into your designs is exactly the same no matter what method you use to actually create your pages. Now we have 10 widgets to work from underneath the filter section. Eight of those are actual filters. The last two are apply button and pagination. So we know we set up a range filter. So all we're going to do is drag that range filter into our section that we're going to put our filters into. You can see that now opens up the edit range filter options. So the first thing we do is select the filter. All we need to do is click inside there and any filters that fit into the price range type will be listed. So you can see we only have one example right now, but obviously if you have more naming them correctly at the beginning makes life a lot easier than when you want to choose from the different options that you may have available. So we say price range filter. You can see that now pulls in the dynamic values of the product. So we've got a range between two and 90. What we can do now is we can come in and say this filter for, we're going to click on there and that now gives us a range of different options. We can tell it where is our data actually stored? What type of data are we working with? So if you were working with Jet Engine or the Jet Engine calendar, you can reference those. If you're using the Jet Woo Builder, you can reference those from the product grid and the product lists and also the WooCommerce archives. Or if you're dealing with Elemental Pro, you can deal with the archives and posts in there. However, what we want is the WooCommerce shortcode. So we click on that. That's now going to specify that the data that's going to be used in that range is going to apply and be pulled from the WooCommerce shortcode. In other words, the default WooCommerce, not using any of the other Jet plugins. Now we have a couple more options that are available. We can specify how do we want to apply this information, this search. You can see we have Ajax and we have page reload. The Ajax basically means that your page's information will update without the page needing to refresh. Generally, I tend to say that's the better option, but there are times where you may not want that. You may actually want it to reload the page, at which point you can, if you want to, then choose page reload. And you can see now that just filters out the options that are available based upon that type of filtering. So let's put that back to Ajax. You can see then we've got apply on value range or click on apply button. If we want to, we can say click on apply button. So what will happen is we'll have to make this change to the slider and then we click the apply button and our data is refreshed with any of the products that meet that particular criteria. So we're going to leave that as value change. You can see if we choose the apply button, we'd have to enable that option. You see, if we get a button, then we'll appear saying apply filters. I don't want that. The Ajax doesn't really require that. Show filter label. If we want to use that, we can use that. And also we can use query IDs. At this point, we don't need to worry about any of those things. We can go to the style option then, and we can adjust the look of this. So if we want to make changes to it, we can easily come in adjust the coloring for any of the different parts of the actual slider, the text, the numeric information, anything at all. So you can see we can come in and we can just change these. We'll make them a little darker. So it's very easy to make those adjustments. Same goes for the values. We can easily come in here. We can change the typography. So we can adjust the size, the style of the text, change the font to anything we want. So we have full control over how this is all styled. Also, we can come in and we can adjust things like the margins and padding and so on. So let's just come into this. We'll specify 20 pixels at the top just to give us a bit of space. Maybe 20 is a little too much. Let's put that to 10. There we go. That looks good. And we'll just adjust the font size just to make it a little larger. About 14 looks good. Okay, so there's our first slider. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit update on there. We'll take a look at our page then. We'll refresh that and we'll see this in action. So let's just refresh our test page. You can see there's our slider. So all we need to do now is adjust the values in there. So we can adjust the slide. You can see that will adjust the values that are being used and also automatically then filter the information that's being displayed on our page. We can adjust either side. And as you can see, it will update in real time pretty much. All we need to do is let it refresh itself there and using the Ajax filters, it just doesn't require us to sort of reload the page. So that's the first one done. Very easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to create our second filter. So let's just jump back over. We finished with this template a second. So let's exit out of our dashboard, jump back into our smart filters, and we'll add a new filter in. 
This time we're going to say filter category. We'll do the same thing then for the actual label. So filter category and filter for the active label. Filter type this time we're going to say we want to use a checkbox list. So we're going to click on that. You can see it says, what, what's your data source? So what we're going to do is we're going to come into there and you can see we've got a range of different options again. This time we're going to choose taxonomies. Once we do that, it opens up the taxonomy information where we can go through now and choose exactly what kind of taxonomy we want to reference it against. Click on there. You can see we have a load of options available to us and you may see different things in here depending upon if you have WooCommerce installed and what settings you have inside WooCommerce. What we want though is simply to come down to categories. So we're looking for the product categories. So we're going to click on product categories, choose that. You see there's a couple more options then for show only child of current terms and group terms by parents. We'll come back and take a look at those a little later if we need to. For now, we're going to ignore them. Now you should notice that we've got a query settings section, which is completely blank. Now this is because it knows exactly what we're doing. We're filtering against what's already created underneath the product categories. So we don't need to put any kind of query variable in for this particular type of filter. So we can ignore that completely. There's nothing there to put in. What we're going to do is we're going to save this or update it depending upon what you're doing. Once we've done that, we're now ready to jump back into our template and add in this second filter. Now jump back over to my archives templates so what I'm going to do is scroll down and find those widgets that we need this time we're going to choose the checkbox filter drag that over drop that into our filter area on the left hand side and we're now ready to go and set up where the filter is coming from and what we need it to do so again you can see we've got select filter we can click in there and this will now show us only the filters that are applied to this particular type of filter we're creating in example the checkbox filter Click filter categories. You can see that now pulls in all the categories. What it doesn't do is show them in the hierarchy. So in other words, you might have clothing. Underneath clothing, you have things like hoodies, t-shirts, and so on. We can change that, and we'll take a look at that in a little moment. For now, we'll leave it as is. Filter four, and again, you can see we've got all those options available. So again, we're going to come in and say WooCommerce shortcode because this applies to our WooCommerce. Everything else, we're going to leave exactly as it is. So now if we come back in and update that, we'll jump back over to our test page, we'll refresh that, and we'll be able to see our new filter in place. Now the beauty of this is because we have two filters created, we can use them together. So we're not limited to only using the choosing which category it falls into or choosing the price range, we can use both. So we click on clothing, for example, you can see that now filters out anything that's not inside the clothing section. Or we can come down and we can say we only want t-shirts. Well, we can do that and you can see you can filter it out. We're not limited to just using one of these, we can use multiples. So we can say that we want t-shirts and hoodies. So you can see that now filters it out because it's Ajax, there's no page refresh. Now again, we can use this with the price filter. So we could say that we want to filter this a little deeper and say that we want only items that are over 52 and under 82. As there is, there's nothing currently there. So let's pull that back a little bit, 42. And you can see that now gets rid of the t-shirts, the polo shirts and so on, because they fall outside that price range. So it's very easy to use together with multiple filters. So let's just jump back and take a look at how we can set up that hierarchy, which shows how our products are actually related to each other. So let's just jump back over. We're going to come out of this, exit to our dashboard. We're going to go back to our smart filters. And in there, we're just going to simply go into our filter category. Once we're in there, we can now use these options for show only child of current terms and group terms by parents. So we just choose group terms by parents, hit update, jump back over to our test page and refresh it. You'll see now that the accessories, hoodies, and t-shirts, because they are a subsection of clothing, they now sit inside there, they're indented slightly, which means it just makes a lot more sense to the end user that clothing has some sections inside it, whereas decor and music are separate individual sections in their own right. So that's just a couple of basic examples of how we can use JetSmart filters to create really cool, really interactive filters for our content on our website. It's something, like I say, that some people get a little confused at because of this two-stage process, especially when you look at the actual filters themselves. It can be kind of daunting when you look at it and thinking, I really don't know what value to put where. And hopefully what this has done is it's shown you how easy it actually is to start creating your own custom filters. So what are your thoughts on the JetSmart filters? Could you see yourself using this in your own projects? If so, how do you think you could use it and integrate it into your designs? I'd love to get your feedback. In that comment section below, we can get a conversation started and we all benefit from finding out how we're all gonna use these kinds of products.
Now speak in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know why you didn't enjoy it in the comment section so I can make better content for you moving forward. Okay, well, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.